Now it's time for a test. The voltage cutoff is hooked up to the auxiliary supply from the truck. That's this red wire. It is also connected to ground. That's the black wire. These wires go out to the DC to DC charger. The red light here indicates that there is voltage flowing through this line. Uh, in other words, it's turned on. And the reason is because the cutoff is set at 10 volts, meaning if there is more than 10 volt DC coming in, then the switch will be turned on. So let's adjust that. We want that to be more like, oh, 13 and a half maybe. Expecting that the voltage, once the truck starts, will be up around 14. So now it has turned off as expected, that's good. We're still getting 12.2 volts from the truck battery. And the trick here now, and the final test, is to see if when we fire up the truck, that will turn on as the voltage goes up because the alternator kicks in. So let's fire up the truck and see what we get. How about that? We're getting 14.2 volts now because the alternator is spinning and generating electricity, which then overcomes the 13.5 volt DC threshold that we put into the system. That illuminated the light, indicating the voltage is now flowing from here into our device, which then turns on the DC charger and the battery will charge.
moment of truth. I have the voltage displayed from the truck here and the voltage in the trailer is displayed here. Notice that the truck is providing 12.1 volts. The current house voltage is 12.5 volts. Headed to the truck, hit the starter, and see what we have. Voltage is up. We have 14.3 on the auxiliary power from the truck and the house voltage is steadily rising as it adjusts to the voltage from the alternator. We should see it settle right around 14. Other than maybe adding a loom around that wire that goes from the truck into the trailer, we'll call this project complete and successful.